three minutes and 19 seconds to the media. Y'all can sit here. Right here with the iPad. Now, there we go. Okay, let's see what we got here. I do. Michelle, you ready? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Are, are, are we waiting on anybody else, Michelle? Can you tell? Mm -hmm. Don't think so. Okay. We got Miss Hales here. Yes. We got okay. All right. We have enough for a quorum. All right. I'll go ahead and get started. I'll call the uh, I will call to order the budget advisory committee meeting on Wednesday, June tenth, um, uh, um, at two p.m. Roll call, please. Uh, Chair Banther. Here. Vice Chair Hales. Here. Mr. Doddridge is absent and excused. Mr. Kudos. Here. Mr. McCloy. Here. Ms. Hall. It's not here yet. Maybe she's trying to sign it. And Mr. Bergeron. Here. Thank you. Okay. All right, very good. Um, we'll go, we're going to get started. We have we have we have we have eight different departments today, but um, um, and our first one is the public works, uh, Tom function. 
Hello, everybody. Uh, how's everyone doing? I'm Tom Funchen, Public Works Director. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with too much over here because COVID has put a little bit of a dent in our uh, in our budgets, as we all very well know. Uh, so just give me a few minutes here and I'll go over the multiple budgets I have. Uh, the first budget, which we'll talk about is the uh, facilities maintenance. It's on page 83. I don't know if everyone's got in front of them or not. Uh, but if you don't, that's fine, Danny. I'll just touch base on that. Uh, it's pretty much almost a mirror of last year's budget uh, with some minor adjustments and a little bit of overtime. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's pretty much followed the same pattern. Uh, of course, uh, prior to uh, prior to the uh, COVID incident over here, I was actually hoping to move it up a little bit, but uh, unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. Um, and of course, I got some projects going on. Uh, I think it's pretty much uh, uh, on par there. Uh, have any questions on that budget, or I'm open. No. Thank you. Uh, the next one uh, that I have is the Parks Department General Fund again, page ninety-four. Again, is it's, it's pretty much is going to mirror last year's a slight increase of about thirty thousand uh, dollars, and that's just some uh, mostly in the personnel side of it, some insurance and and the like on with that. Uh, again, as I like I said earlier, I was actually hoping to move that up. I have some quite a few challenges in the parks department, uh, heavy requirement, which I agree with on the beautification, but it's taking a pretty good toll on my uh, on my uh, uh, personnel. Uh, and, uh, so it's going to be tough to maintain that same this year. I know COVID again, made a pretty good dent on it. Uh, not what I would like they've gotten there, but, uh, I got a feeling it's going to have to, it's going to probably show a little more this year, uh, with the fact that we just don't have the, 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 the personnel to do it. This is a department at one time actually had uh, 19 employees on it back in the early two thousands. And I'm working with 13 right now with a lot more responsibility. So somewhere along the line, I'm, you know, I come back again when, when we can, and hopefully when the funds uh, return, that we can think about maybe increasing this budget and at least uh, adding a couple more personnel. So Tom, what are, what are uh, some of the key projects that we're giving up? You're saying it, lack of personnel. I'm not opinion. trying to say, uh, uh, Mr. McCloy, uh, it's not so much giving up. Uh, a lot of the stuff we're doing in the parks, I would say, uh, probably 80% of it is just your general maintenance, uh, mowing, mowing, mowing. As we increase, and I, and I agree with it, a lot of beautifications, whether it's additional trees or additional flowers, uh, they take labor. Uh, I have an employee now that all he does is, is, is spend 40 hours a week watering. Uh, it's quite a bit, you know, and, and I can understand watering because a lot of your beautification doesn't have irrigation or irrigation available. You're doing flower pots. You can't run irrigation every flower pot in the city. It'd be impossible. Uh, right. The cost would be astronomical. Uh, but after a while, uh, as we increase these, uh, it becomes more of a burden just on the labor side of itself. And I said up till maybe you know, uh, five, six years ago, we're holding on. But as we increase the beautification, which I'm, I'm again, as I support, uh, it's starting to take a toll on the departments. You know, up till 2000, we didn't have an excise park and a splash park. Uh, we definitely have as many trees going in and we're going in and they look great, but they all take time. They take maintenance and they take hours and, and uh, it's starting to get to us a little bit, to be honest with you. Okay. Got it. Thanks for the answer. No because I don't see a big number in there for overtime to, to address the uh, issues or. Yeah, uh, you're, you're right. There was, there, there was overtime money in there. Not a lot. Uh, we do a Not lot. Much. Of, excuse me. Not much. Okay. No, there's not. There's not much. And we work pretty much on schedule now. There are some overtime we do do. We do uh, do do. That sounds good. Uh, we uh, do work on the, the plants, yeah. on the treatment plant and on the water plant. But those departments cover that overtime, which is good. Gotcha. I understand. Yeah. And some of the stuff we try to do early in the morning. A lot of our warning was actually done at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning because of the traffic. And it's much more efficient. And so. Right. 
I was, okay. to, yeah. so I was hoping to add to that this year's budget, but we'll get along. Uh, we'll survive. We, we, we survived this far. We'll survive again. Uh, some of the other budgets I haven't touched in Anclothe Nature Park. Uh, there was a, and I, I blame this on myself uh, between last year's and this year's budget. Uh, I didn't do enough, a good enough job uh, uh, reviewing that after it came out. And there was a minor, well, it was a minor, there's quite a bit of change in it. But uh, we'll survive it this year and I'll be back to its normal operating numbers. Uh, you will see no effect on the park whatsoever. Okay, just don't call me at four o'clock in the morning to help you water, okay? You're not going to be up? <laughs> well, you probably got a tea time at seven, so I don't want to bother that. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, uh, the next department we can talk about uh, is the uh, Roads and Streets Department. That's on page 134. 134. Give us 134. One. Yes. Uh, again, this is, uh, uh, I'd actually, in this case here, uh, again, as the budget hasn't changed much over the years, except for the minor changes. And again, I can blame it on COVID, but that's, that's pretty much what's done it to us. Um, I was going to request additional money in overtime. Uh, one of the things Road Streets does that people don't realize is we do a lot of work with the uh, uh, special events, first Fridays especially. Uh, it takes it takes quite a bit of people over there to do it, um, you know, but fixing lights and cleaning up, and uh, so it takes a little bit of a beating on the uh, on the overtime. Well worth it, if I may say, but definitely well worth it. Uh, and these guys also come in on uh, emergencies, trees down, light poles knocked over. Uh, for some reason, it's been. Uh, a little extra this year for whatever reason just i guess 2020 has just been that year so those things are happening but uh one of these days down the road we'll have to uh, look at that and probably uh, add some more uh funds to cover that but again yeah it's pretty much the same budget i had last year with those those other minor changes okay uh, the next one which is interesting uh i'll probably uh, landfill closing i don't know how that not much of the, I'm sorry, solid waste would be the next one. I apologize. Solid waste is on page 210. 210. Uh, 210, yes. That's the uh, waste management contract for the most part. It's pretty much dictated by uh, our customer our customer account and the funds that come in from, uh, from those. Uh, not too much of a change there. Uh, it's a pretty active department. You know, in case people don't know, that department works... Uh, Seven days a week. I have guys coming in every weekend, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays to do trash trash runs. Uh, the parks, the beaches, they all have to be taken care of. Um, Mr. Tom, excuse me. On line, on line thirty four. Oh, what's the increase in uh, in other contractual of uh, service? What does that reflect? That large increase from fiscal year twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty one. Uh, probably the increase in the uh, uh, fees. Every year there's a readjustment of the fees. Ron could probably touch upon that better than I can, but there's been a, an increase in the fees. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We have added some more equipment, uh, making some changes, in, uh, changes but upgrades in sanitation. Uh, we'll be replacing trash cans around the city. Uh, we did buy a, uh, a new machine this year, Kubota. It's actually automated for picking up garbage cans. So instead of me sending two guys out on weekends uh, to pick up trash, we'll be doing it with one person uh, or eliminating at least a few hours a week on that over here. But it's, uh, it's hoping it's going to speed up the, the process and make it a little bit easier on the, on, on the labor side of it. Uh, those, uh, the equipment like that really does save us a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, heavy labor. And hopefully it'll save me on uh, working with comp issues too. We want to stay away from things like that. Um, the next one, uh, which is, I don't know if you notice it, there's a landfill closing on 214. I know no one talks about that too much, uh, uh, but what you will see there right now uh, in that one, uh, there's a little bit of change. You'll see the actual uh, March numbers are down from the, the normal 15,000. Uh, it will get back up to that 11, 12,000, depending on what year it is. Uh, this has been a slight delay in this uh, sampling out there because of the Mears Boulevard going through. There's some... Uh, uh, sampling sites over there that have to be moved, so they were shut down for a while. We're just a little bit behind on that, but we'll end up uh, we'll end up balancing it out at the end of the year. I don't know if anyone knows that or not, but I did. 
the next big one we can touch about uh, would be, uh, I would go to page 218. This is the uh, yard waste recycling. <coughs> that one's kind of important. Uh, right now the budget doesn't change too much, but if you notice that down in the, uh, uh, the CIP side of that, uh, there's some increases in building and other improvements. Uh, as you all know, Mirrors Boulevard is going through and sometime in the near future, uh, that will be operational. It kind of makes my scale where it sits now uh, uh, obsolete. We have to move that scale house over onto the yard waste. Uh, that will take some funds. The existing scale itself can move, uh, but the building itself and all the uh, utilities and uh, 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 pavement and things like that are going to have to be uh, reestablished on top of the uh, the yard waste. So that's what that, that money there is uh, earmarked for. Uh, my intention there though, is in the next year, once that gets moved, the initial site right now for yard waste is in a scale house. I would like to turn over to a true recycling yard where people can just, it'll be the main recycling yard in the city. You can bring your, your papers, your cans. Uh, hopefully if I get along with the county to be able to even take some other stuff in like maybe TVs and things like that. That's my ultimate goal if we can get there. But that's what I, oh, I, I like to propose back to the board sometime after, after the Mears Boulevard and the scale has been moved. Uh, the other one that's had quite a bit of an impact, and I'm, I'm going to skip ahead because the other one's just boring, <laughs> lock, lock clearing and all, uh, is up to page uh, 291, which is the marina. Everyone knows where the marina is down on Dodecanese. Uh, as you're probably well aware of, we've done uh, some large renovations to the marina. I think a little bit over uh, 600 plus thousand dollars, 680,000 dollars, I think is what we did. Uh, new slips, new piers, uh, repair seawall. Uh, I also did go back to the board and made some uh, adjustments to the fees. Or the board made some adjustments to the fees. Uh, so what you'll see in that line is actually under uh, 2019, our, our a uh, slip rental was at 35,000. Uh, the original budget, uh, about 60, I think that year was 62, but uh, uh, we were shut down for a number of months. So we weren't collecting the money from the, uh, from the slips. Uh, and I think it also affected a little bit of the uh, boat launch uh, permits, which we also handled down there. Uh, this year we're up a little bit, we're about 47,000. And that was at the end of uh, March. Uh, with a proposed budget of 93,000. We believe we're gonna meet, meet that. It's not exceed it. Uh, the, the work we've done down in the marina uh, is actually, uh, is, is made some major improvements, especially on the uh, transient side. Our daily slips have come in for two or three weeks. Uh, the amount of people we're bringing in now has been way above our expectations over here. And the word out on the, in the sailing is that uh, we have one of the best marinas now back on the, uh, on the West Coast. So we're pretty proud of that. And hopefully that will get that marina back to in the black where the operating needs to be. The other thing on this over here, and uh, I would like to do, and this is a little bit different, and I haven't had a chance to talk to Mark much about it, but make some changes in the daily boat launch fee. I know if you guys have uh, heard much about that or complaints about it, where you can buy a, a resident can buy a fee for the whole year, uh, non-resident can buy a, also a permit to, to, to launch, but. In that case, a lot of people are going to launch two or three times. A lot of people don't bother buying the launch permit, and they end up either taking a chance of getting a ticket or don't get caught at all. I would like to propose eventually somewhere out there is to put a, uh, a daily fee, uh, like a parking meter out there. Not a meter, not for parking, not at all, but hopefully sell those uh, daily tickets. And uh, it's been very successful for the county over at Anderson Park. I'm hoping to mirror that idea and maybe get some revenues back up when it need to be. Uh, getting down towards the end a little bit, stormwater, uh, which is which is really important. Uh, if you've looked over the years, and my stormwater budgets have uh, uh, been up there pretty good, and we've been spending a lot of money on a lot of projects. Uh, two big projects going on right now, which will pretty much I don't know if it'll deplete it all the way down to zero. Ron can answer that better than I can, uh, but we have a stormwater project over on Palm Avenue, uh, which is on a stormwater action plan. That's about three quarters of the way done. And then we have a major project here on uh, Gross Avenue that uh, was originally thought was gonna come in about $3.2 million uh, with a million and a half dollar uh, grant from uh, Swift Mud. Uh, that's actually coming less than we originally thought was gonna come in at, which is good news. So I should have a couple bucks left in the budget by the time we're done with it. Uh, 
but that's a big project and we're really I'm really happy that came in the way it came in and well, I will be coming back probably next year on the as far as stormwater goes is an up, uh, update to stormwater action plan and you'll see that those those uh, budgets will change a little bit but a lot more money is going to be going into maintenance as it is, was into construction the last six or seven years uh, we pretty much met most of the original stormwater action budget a uh, stormwater action plan i'm sorry most of that work's been done it almost tops it off when we get to uh, gross avenue so we'll start shifting over to a more of a maintenance that will also have to increase some some staff probably in that case, but that's where we stand there. Uh, the last thing I got to mention uh, is vehicle maintenance. Uh, got a new fire truck on board now, uh, but the vehicle maintenance is in nice shape. Uh, again, that, that budget is pretty much driven by uh, each department's and internal service fund. So uh, the easier they take out the equipment, the less it costs the city, So, which is, I guess, a good thing. But anyone's been pretty good about that. Uh, the last, two, the last thing that backs on the whole budget, which is with a little bit of capital outlay, there's not much out there in the budget now, again, because of COVID. Uh, but uh, we do have some paving and some sidewalk work that we will continue. Uh, that will always be out there. I'll never get away from that. But uh, I don't know. It's been kind of quick. I probably went over it pretty fast. Uh, but I'm open to questions, concerns, comments. Thank, thank, thank you, Tom. Um, um, any more questions? Speak up. Good. All right, Tom. Thank you very much, as always. Well, thank you. Good, good talk to everybody. Get back to my thing here. Okay, next up is Fire Department, Chief Young. Good afternoon, everybody. Chief Young from the Fire Department. I'm going to share my screen here with everybody. Confirm that you can see it. Everybody see that screen? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So uh, just going to go over our uh, proposed budget that we uh, submitted. Uh, as you can see, it's a little over five point six million dollars for the next year. I threw up a picture there of the new ladder truck that we got delivered uh, a couple weeks ago. Just so you know, uh, we're pretty happy it's here. We're doing some training on it, so hopefully it'll be in service before long. Five-year perspective on our budgets. Uh, as you can see, this year, $5.6 million, just a little bit more than the budget that we uh, submitted. Uh, I want to talk about the SAFER grant. You know, if you were there last year, you probably saw some feedback. Um, we talked about the SAFER grant last year a little bit. Uh, this was a three-year grant from FEMA that provided us four new firefighters uh, and the percentages of what they paid for each year. This year, they're paying 35% of the uh, salary of the and benefits of the firefighters. Uh, next year, this budget next year will uh, be the total cost to the city of about 400,000 as the grant will uh, expire at that time. So that's an increase there. Uh, we have applied for another grant, assistance to firefighters grant. Uh, this is to purchase new bunker gear for the firefighters. Uh, this is the uh, ensemble that they wear into the fires, the jackets, the coats, the pants, et cetera. This is a 90-10 grant, meaning the city will pay 10% and uh, assistance to firefighters grant will pay 90%. Uh, well, the grant was submitted for $122,000. Uh, the city would pay a little over 12,000 if the grant is awarded. Uh, you'll notice in the budget though that the city and the penny fund has budgeted the $122,000 in the event that uh, the grant does not get awarded to us. Uh, this gear has a shelf life that we have to replace at times. Uh, each firefighter has two sets of gear uh, due to the cancer uh, presumptive bill. That way when they go into a fire and they come out, this, the dirty gear goes to a uh, decontamina decontamination process and they put on their backup gear. So uh, we have to start rotating the gear out and that's what that is for. Uh, here's our vehicle plan. Uh, right now we have budgeted a 2021 Chevy Tahoe to replace one of our older vehicles in our fleet. Uh, I believe it's gonna replace a 2008 vehicle. Uh, there is no new engine in this proposed budget this year. We won't be uh, looking for a new engine until about the 22-23 budget. Uh, the new ladder truck we just saw a minute ago is a lease to own truck. Uh, the first payment of $239,000 will come out here in the next month 
and there will be a five annual payments for that ladder truck. And the ladder truck uh, usually keeps, uh, we keep it around 10 years. Uh, so that should last us probably till 2030, hopefully. Uh, here's some funding. Uh, this is how we get some of our money for our budget. Pinellas County EMS contract that we have with the county provides about $1.6 million for EMS services. This is an increase of four, a little over 4% from last year. We also have a contract, fire contract with the county to provide fire coverage for their unincorporated areas within the city. We get a little over $500,000 for that. Uh, we also get some specialty equipment funds from the county. We get $10,000 a year for our fire boat and we get a $5,000 a year for our marine unit. Uh, so total 15 for our two boats. So when it comes down to the whole budget, the county funds about $2.1 million of our fire budget. The city makes up the difference of $3.5 million. That's how we come to our $5.6 million budget. And with that, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer anything you might have. Uh, Mr. Banner, Chief, what's, your, what's your head count right now? Uh, we have about 40 uh, personnel in the department right now. Okay. We run three shifts, 24 hours on, uh, uh, 48 hours off, three different shifts, A, B, and C. Got it. Any, any more questions? All right. All right. Thank you, Chief. We do, we, do, we, do, we, 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 we we do appreciate it. Thank you. Our next one is the police department chief coaching. Nope. Okay. Can you hear me guys? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. So I'm here with my team today. So you just, um, you saw the fire department's budget really is the police department's budget just in red. So um, we'll go ahead with ours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank, you ready? We're gonna share a screen with you guys. Um, so if everyone can see that, um, I'll start rolling through the presentation. Um, like, I, like I come before you guys every year, our FY2021 proposed budget is $8.3 million. Um, there's really no increase over last year. It's, it's slight, it's, it's point, uh, three quarters of a percent increase, roughly 61,000. So as I always, as I always talk to uh, the committee, when you, when you prepare a budget, it really should evolve around your strategic plan and who you are. So um, as you can see, you know, our mission basically statement that we talked to you guys about all year, um, this strategic plan is, is pretty much um, spread out through our culture at the community, but um, we'll roll to the next one. We have our vision. This is all part of our strategic plan. This is kind of what we believe in. This is what, you know, this money helps, uh, helps us do. And we go to uh, our core values. These are really important. All the officers, when they come into training, um, they better know these probably by the second week or, you know, they'll get called out on it. So it's kind of what we, what we believe in and how we police. And as you know, um, you know, we have a, a five-year strategic plan. Um, everybody's been involved in that. It's actually been driven from the bottom up. So the officers have their fingerprints all over it. Um, so really, uh, again, the strategic plan uh, is also in line with, with our accreditation, which we'll talk about next. You can see that nice picture there with your chairman, the city manager, and some of us. This is our um, second go around of getting reaccredited. And, and I will say, when we got accredited this time, and this ain't no walk in the park, they actually said our accreditation process was almost flawless. So we met all 200 standards with flying colors. So that's a, a testament to all the men and women of the department. Um, some of what we do, obviously, we operate a 24-7 patrol division, 24-7 communications division, 24-7 uh, investigative division. Um, obviously, property room, everything is worked through accreditation. Our records management division. Uh, we also run the city's code enforcement division. That's why I have no hair left. Um, we also operate a uh, fully functional. Um, I know it's probably not popular to say today, but we do have a SWAT team that's professionally trained to deal with, uh, with those incidents that can be uh, very dangerous in our community. Um, as we continue on, we have a fu uh, fully staffed canine unit, fully functional traffic homicide unit. These are the teams that go out and investigate very serious accidents. Um, our IT division merged with the city. We also have a partnership with the sheriff's department. So I, I will say our technology is, is, is very advanced, Frank. 
some of the things that we really like to talk about, you know, who we are as a police department is our community policing initiatives. You all know the stuff we do in the community, coffee with a cop, stop, walk and talk, night guys program, bike patrols, vacation house checks, the list goes on and on. Um, one of the things that Major Trill put into effect a year or two ago is our peace team and its public engagement and community education. These guys really are problem solvers. They go out and work with the public to solve problems. Also, our crime prevention program, we have a new officer assigned to it. But uh, this program really, really engages, you know, with, with all the crime watch associations throughout the city. Um, it really is a very successful program because we really get a lot of buy-in from the folks. So this is, a, this is a really good program that was actually started when, when our city manager was police chief, our community officers in public schools. Uh, we have probably about 20 officers that adopt the class every year. Um, in the elementary schools and they go in, um, I think once a week or once a month and they teach gun safety, pool safety, stranger danger. It's really a great way to interact and mentor with kids. Um, also, as you know, our, our SRO program, um, it's not just about being security guards at the school, although post Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, that's one of the things that we have to do, but we really are very much about engagement, um, you know, with the kids and, and doing those quality things that not only help mentor kids, but really, really make it a partnership between us and the kids in the administration and school district. Uh, full time. Uh, where are we, Frank? So cops and kids is another program that was started by our city manager. We've carried it through. And like you always like to do, we keep progressing. And, and what we do, this program um, is really recognized. It's, it's now almost a level five program in the county through JWB. But it's a phenomenal program that works with disadvantaged kids and you know, since its inception as a grassroots program has, has really come a long way. And I think we, we service about 70 kids. So uh, great, great programs, def definitely a grassroots uh, initiative. So police department real quick, we have 53 sworn officers, 12 civilian employees, six crossing guards. Um, this is the organizational charts, how the departments run. We pretty much stick by this. Um, you know, it's basically how you're structured and how things flow. But you know, when it comes to chain of command, we're very, um, we love to have a two-way chain of command. We like to push a lot of things down to the line level and power the sergeants and, and corporals and officers to do their job. Obviously, we're a big part of emergency operations. Um, as you guys know, um, we've gotten all the equipment now that, you know, four by four trucks, equipment to go in high water. As you know, our city's real low lying. So we have a lot of equipment that can, that can help, uh, you know, basically rescue people getting into areas that most vehicles can't get into. One of the big pushes now, we have, uh, we have a pretty good complement of drones and people trained on them. You know, again, for emergency management, these, uh, these drones come in very handy. This was done last year after our lessons learned from Irma. So what you see here, and it's not all of it, but we spent over $100,000 when 19 got shut down, all the singles don't work. That was a major issue for us because to just staff one intersection, in August or September, take like 19 and Tarpon Avenue. I need at least three officers and only gonna get an hour out there in that heat. So it's almost impossible to staff all of 19 and run. So this, these, this equipment that we have here within an hour and a half, we can set up a whole strategic plan with these barricades for 19. It's self, you know, it's self operating. The vehicles will operate. We have everything in place. And uh, the city manager and the commission gave us the money to do this. and. You know, again, you'll see that we have pickup trucks to move the trailers and all that stuff. So we could deploy all this stuff within an hour and a half anywhere in the city, whether it's alternate 19, 19, or even smaller operations. We also have electronic signs that are incorporated into this plan. As you can see, some of the trailers, I know some people say, why does the police department need pickup trucks? Well, these trailers are, are starting to destroy the rear ends on the Tahoe. So we need the right equipment to get our resources out there. Plus, we need four by fours that get into places where other people can't get into, especially when the city floods in a normal rainstorm. So our fleet is a big part of our strategic plan. Um, due to COVID-19, we, we have had budget cuts this year, about 428,000. I list them all out and there are no officers are being cut. Um, what we did cut, um, you know, we could pretty much afford to cut. We don't like it, but um, it, it's not officers. It's not, nothing that's going to really affect what we do with our strategic plan, but you know, we have to prepare for the fact that the city's gonna could lose revenue up in this fiscal year. Just a, a quick budget perspective as this comes in. Um, I've been doing I've been doing a budget for the police department since 2012, maybe even a little before that. 
Um, so basically, you can see our budgets. We're pretty much in line. Um, every year, our budget increased, if you average out, about 3.83%. Um, definitely, you know, we're definitely in line with, you know, inflation and, and how things work. But the cost of policing is not cheap. So um, we'll flip pages. Just a, just a perspective from 2017. Again, kind of showing you the same thing. Um, our increases are not outrageous, um, but you know, again, they're needed to uh, fulfill our mission. So highlights comparison to 2020. You know, our budget's divided into three parts: personnel, services, operating, and capital. Um, our personnel services, most of these are finance calculations, went up about 1.9 percent. Our operating got got cut about 1.2 percent. And um, a lot of our capital items, like in the last slide, got cut. It's about $55,000. So, again, this, this budget that we're basically submitting is pretty much a, a no-increase budget from last year. This is our uh, police vehicle maintenance budgets. Um, it was actually cut this year, but we operate a really, a really modern fleet. Um, definitely meets the mission, everything that we need to do. Um, we are under the Indy plan where these cars will last on six and seven years and maintenance costs and everything for a vehicle of, for a fleet of this size definitely are much cheaper. You have officer accountability of, you know, officer ownership. These vehicles are, are taken better care of and they also help with our hiring recruiting. So our vehicle fleet plan is, is definitely strategic and, and falls in line with our strategic plan. Our capital budget, as I said, got cut this year is $55,000 or less. Again, we can get by without this. Um, but, you know, it's something that, again, we think that the revenue stream over at City Hall is going to be less this year. Some of the revenues that we receive, um, we get $74,000 uh, refunded back to us for all of our off-duty work. We basically take it out of the budget. The officers pay all their taxes, and then we get reimbursed by the vendors. We also receive about $368,000 from Pinellas County School Board. That's for our SRO program. They pay roughly 65 to 70% of the cost. And then in the summer, those officers go on the road. Um, and then we, um, we get $6,000 from our Pinell Pinellas County Drug Task Force that we work on. It's called IGA Money. And then uh, DEA for our narcotics detective there, they reimburse us $18,000 a year for uh, his overtime expenses. As you know, we also run code enforcement. Um, so basically, a little cut there. Um, that, that's, that division does a lot of work. I'm telling you, right, I've been running code enforcement for 20 years. That division really does a lot of work. It's, it can be a thankless job, but they bring in roughly $104,000 a year in fines. Um, you can see we're definitely, you know, we're definitely in on that mark through this year. But, you know, the biggest thing is keeping the city clean and, and going after health safety violations and, you know, making sure people are complying with our codes. Um, not an easy job, but I, I think we do a really good job of it. So this is our federal equitable sharing. This is basically money that, you know, we get from forfeiture from the federal government, from our DEA task force involvement. So this year it's been cut a little bit, but, but this, uh, this money that comes from the federal government helps fund our SWAT team, our canine unit, and, and additional patrol equipment. And I will tell you, the Fed, federal government is very strict about this. This can only be used for police stuff. It can't be used for community engagement programs it can't be used for cops and kids it can only be used for police related equipment so and they all of us like crazy so we have to stick by you know basically the criteria of that program and uh that's my presentation um obviously um you guys have our budget and line item form so i'll be uh glad to take any questions if any that you may have thank you Go back. thanks chief and i think we all we all we all appreciate how you all uh, operate and are prepared to handle it, you know, 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 it, you know any, it, anything in Tarpon Springs, and you've been created with funding as well, to, uh, you know, to make that happen. So I, I think we all appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm any questions at all? No questions. I think Mr. McCoy may have one. Okay, you oh, you got you got to speak up. This is stupid Zoom. He's thing. muted. He's muted. Yeah. Can't wait till we're done with this. Claire, Claire, you're muted. We can't. Okay, I get it. There you go. Oh, no. Do it again. Again. Nope. Can't hear you, Claire. There we go. Okay, Claire, start over. Sorry about that. Okay. First, as a compliment, Chief, you could probably expect 
some, uh, uh, some calls from major U.S. cities on some of the great programs you have in the community. I think you could teach, teach them a few things. The only numbers question I had, was, and you taught me this last year, so it's your fault. Uh, overtime, I believe, is heavily a function, uh, function of the number of city functions. However, the 2020 budget was 475,000 and the revised budget is the same number. I would have expected with the virus going on that the number of functions have dropped off pretty significantly. So um, I didn't mention, and I apologize for it, we just got a $112,000 grant um, through through the federal government, through FDLE for police overtime expenses for COVID-19 is a two year grant. So nice. basically all of our overtime for COVID will be reimbursed by the federal government. Nice. So, um, but uh, is, that, is that your only question? You want me to elaborate on that? Go ahead and elaborate on that. That's my only question. So we've had some overtime expenses for COVID, um, beach details, things like that, but all of that is not gonna be taken out of our overtime budget. It's gonna be basically billed to the federal government and they're gonna pay it. So we're tracking now all of our COVID-19 overtime, every, every bit of it's being tracked and monthly we submit for reimbursement through the federal government for that Great. overtime. Good explanation, I understand. All right, Claire, is that it? That's it. All right, thank you very much, Claire. Anybody else? Okay, all right, Chief, thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Cultural and Civic Services, Ms. Wood. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Diane Wood, and um, under uh, this department, we have two different areas. We have Tarpon Arts and we have the library. So um, I believe Carrie is going to give you her presentation for the library first, and then I'll follow with Tarpon Arts. Carrie? Okay. Thank you. Um, we have uh, two main budgets uh, for ongoing expenses for the library, uh, as well as library impact funds that could be used for future capital projects. Um, our main library budget is our 1502 account, which is on page 109 of your budget books. Um, and when you look at that, you'll see that we have several intergovernmental allocations to different departments. This reflects the cost of the services provided by different departments like IT and uh, resources, procurement, uh, building maintenance uh, to uh, run the cost of the library. And it's important that we have the cost of all our expenses included because uh, the library receives funding from the county, uh, from unincorporated areas of the county, the Pinellas Public Library Cooperative disperses these funds. We're a member library of the cooperative and um, the more money that we show reflected in our budget, the more opportunity we have to receive uh, funding from the county. Um, there's not a whole lot uh, change on my uh, budget you'll see here, um, except for uh, we did switch uh, from the replacement computers coming out of the machinery equipment, which is typically been placed in to uh, the operating expense, uh, line 52. So um, that caused my operating supply budget to go down quite a bit. Um, I was able to take the money um, from this year for from the travel budget because uh, this past year, most of our library conferences ended up getting canceled because of COVID. And right now it's still up in the air about whether we're gonna have any conferences next year or if everything's gonna be digital. So I'm hoping to be able to get away with less travel money in the upcoming year and cover uh, more of my operating expenses with that. Um, I do also have another budget. It's uh, 1502. It's on page 114. It's our library memorial account. Um, this is uh, our donations budget. And you'll see that um, the amount projected for this year is down um, from what it traditionally is. Uh, this is money primarily received from the friends of the library. They're our biggest donor and they usually um, allocate an amount each year as um, a gift from their investments. They, um, the money they earn off their investments. They also operate a used bookstore in the library and all of the money that's raised from that uh, is at the end of 
are returned back to the library so we can use it to for special enhancements. Um, this year, uh, it's estimated only 20,000 because they expect the investments to be down and also being closed for several months this year. Um, we have had obviously a decline in our book sales in libraries. So um, that number is subject to change, but that's just the best estimate based on you know the current situation. So that's just a quick overview of my budget. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Karen. Are there any questions? No questions? All right. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, um, I'm going to go over Tarpon uh, Arts now. Uh, and um, we have, I think you, you probably received a PowerPoint um, earlier in the week from us just to kind of give you an overview. But basically, in Tarpon Arts, we have uh, four venues. Um, the Performing Arts Center, which of course is in City Hall, um, the Cultural Center, Heritage Museum, and Safford House. Um, we also have responsibility for the train depot. Um, of course, COVID-19 has really kind of stopped the performing arts industry in its tracks. And um, that was our case in, in uh, mid-March. Uh, so you know, traditionally we would be bringing in quite a bit of revenue and um, because of, you know, having to cancel or postpone a lot of shows, um, of course, that has affected, you know, us considerably, but we do book things a year in advance. So we're actually, you know, planning our um, 2021 season, which technically will would launch in July and um, God willing. And um, that brings in a significant amount of, of revenue because a lot of our patrons are, you know, very excited, you know, about that. But um, as far as the budget goes, we have had some decreases. One of the things that in 1602 on page 116, um, we had we did get a new janitor service this year, and um, that takes care of all of our facilities, and uh, they are a little bit more expensive but they are well worth it. They are doing a tremendous job in um, all of uh, the city buildings and, uh, for us. And uh, I think that's ex you know, especially important now when we're having to really disinfect everything. Um, we also had a little bit of an increase um, in training and that's due to our um, conferences that we attend. And as Carrie had mentioned, you know, I think a lot of places are looking, you know, a lot of the conferences are looking at ways to do them a different method. So I'm not even sure that there will be any conferences moving forward, you know, in 2020, 2021. So you would have a quite a bit of savings there. Other than that, I don't have anything significantly out of line. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks, Diane. Um, uh, um, uh, any questions at all? All right, appreciate your time, Diane. Thank you. Uh, next up is the planning department. Uh, Ms. Vincent, that, that's a long time to see for her and me, so. Are you there? Yeah. Sorry about that. Can everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, so the, the planning department budget, um, I'm obviously really kind of wrapping my head around everything again. Um, a little while earlier today, uh, a little while ago, Ron sent out just a, like a one page um, set of highlights for the planning department budget. It really, um, the biggest thing to focus on um, are the professional services. Um, our goal is to, you know, over time, once we get fully staffed again, is to decrease the reliance on consultant dollars. And um, as right now it's shown the proposed 21, uh, 2021 budget, it was $210,000 for consultant services. We do expect to revise that request down to $130,000. Um, we can, by cutting out some of those uh, things that we just don't need uh, for the bus for the staff, we have to make it a one make position to fill. Some of those line items, um, the historic preservation grant, we're going to take that out. We don't need to fund that until next uh, fiscal year. That will be a reimbursable grant when we do if we do get that and the deo distant quarter grant um, again we've applied for that 
those are reimbursable. So we won't spend that 40,000 unless we get 40,000 to reimburse it. Uh, the other big increase that you'll see is in the personnel services. And again, that reflects the, um, some very specific changes. One, the, you know, frankly, my salary coming in was an increase over the previous director. Um, and then we've had uh, an increase for, um, that was approved by the city manager for the, uh, my principal planner. And we are recruiting for, uh, our, to fill our city planner position. And so we are budgeting an in increase in that and revising that job description to reflect um, a higher pay grade. So that's going through the approval process now. So that really is the kind of the highlights of the, the significant changes in the planning department budget for FY21. Um, I do want to call into uh, just to note um, on the March uh, election, there was a fairly significant change to the charter that requires that we update review and update the comprehensive plan every three years. And that is a uh, responsibility of the planning department. So there will be some additional work, uh, not only the comprehensive plan, but any other master, major master plans that exist. So that is going to increase our workload a bit too. So um, we'll, we'll play that out and see how that goes moving forward. But um, I'll stop there. And if there's any questions, I'll try to answer them. Thank, thank, uh, thanks, Renee, and thank, and thank you, and, and, and also thank you for coming back as well. We, we, do, we do appreciate it. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Um, any questions at all? No questions? All right. Thanks, Renee. Thank you. Next up is Economic Development, Ms. Lemons. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Happy to be here this afternoon. Um, I have the Economic Development and the CRA budgets, and... Um, I think it's an understatement to say it's been an, a very unusual and interesting time for our businesses in these past several months. Um, so before I go into the, the two budgets, I just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about um, what we've been doing to support the businesses in these past few months and how proactive the city has been. Um, we were one of the first cities along with St. Pete to start a small business grant. I think Ron might have mentioned that the other day was a thousand dollar grant for our small businesses. It started April 9th. And within the first day we had over hundred applications. Uh, we ended up giving 155 uh, $1,000 grants to our businesses, which really uh, they were very appreciative. And we were appreciative of the, of the support from the board to um, use those funds for that. We also started right away in mid-March creating um, Facebook pages. We started a Tarpon Springs business happenings page. If you haven't gone or seen it, I encourage you to do so. Um, it's, it has nearly a thousand, um, it's a group page, so it has nearly a thousand um, people who have joined it. It's really a good marketing tool for our businesses to um, talk about what they're doing, the specials that they're doing, and everything that the city has going on for our, our business support, um, we put out to them. And then um, in mid-May, we launched our phase one business recovery um, and I know Diane spoke, but she didn't talk too much about this. So I will, I will, because they, their department had a lot to do with it. Um, we did outdoor dining and outdoor display of merchandise for our businesses, it was supported by the, the board of commissioners. Um, we allowed restaurants to expand their outdoor capacity, closed Hibiscus Street. And we had about 20 restaurants that took advantage of that. We have a lot of businesses that are putting additional signage out and, you know, they've been very appreciative of that because every, um, every bit of advertising matters. We've had good reception from the businesses and really good reception from the public who have been, you know, sitting outside in these new nice spaces that they, that they really enjoy. And then last night at the board meeting, the commissioners extended those accommodations through July 19th. So we're very happy about that. And then on Monday, we started our phase two recovery. Um, and this is where Diane's group had a lot to do with it. Um, it's a 12 week campaign. It's a marketing tourism campaign, using TV and digital. And uh, we extended our billboards that we have out through the end of June of 2021. We created a Facebook profile frame. So if you haven't seen that, it's a frame that you can put over your Facebook um, picture to, it says rediscover Tarpon Springs. Uh, we're targeting the uh, three county area, um, 
Northwest Hillsboro, um, West Pasco, and um, Pinellas County to try to bring locals and tourists back to the area and let them know that we're open for business. And we've been distributing blue posters to our businesses, having them replace those yellow ones that the county made them put up to put these new ones up so they can put their specials and, and things on that. So that's been um, a very robust campaign that just started. The ads are running on Spectrum. So look for those if you have Spectrum. And we've been sharing those on Facebook um, as well. So we're very excited about that. And then um, just moving forward and talking with our businesses, I have not heard anyone yet that is closing or because of the pandemic or not reopening because of it yet, I'll say yet. Um, so they, they seem to be weathering the storm and a lot of them, some of them have taken the time off, I'll say to restock, rebrand, um, take a second look at what they're doing and make some changes to their business models. Um, others have found out that not having an online presence is, is not a good thing. I was surprised to see how many businesses didn't have web pages or didn't use computers. So um, they're starting to do that. Many of them have created online sales that they didn't do before. And, and talking with a lot of our restaurants who have been doing the family meals and the, and the to-go and the curbside, I think you're gonna be seeing a lot of that continue even after we um, get through this, if, if we get through this. So anyway, um, I'll move along then to the economic development um, budget. It's, it's page 13. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's pretty much, um, there's nothing new or different to it. It's salaries and um, office supplies and some travel and training on it. So if you have any questions on that, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions at all? Okay, no questions. Are you on? Do you have anything else, Karen, or no? Is that it? Oh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Okay. I also have the CRA, the CRA budget. All right. Starts on page 186. Um, again, there's no new budget requests on there, but I will say that our CRA, our incentive grants have been very successful. Those are the facade and the restaurant grants. And then this past year, we added a new grant. It's called the Building Code Assistance Grant. We haven't had any applications on that yet, but that grant came from finding over the years, we have a lot of older buildings throughout the CRA and in the downtown area that aren't up to code. They need uh, stairways, uh, fire suppression, elevators, and things like that. And a lot of times a new business will try to come in there, but it's too expensive to bring in those improvements. The owner might not want to pay for it. The tenant doesn't because they're improvements that stay with the building. So starting this grant, we're hoping that we will be able to get some of those older buildings renovated and up to code that we'll be able to attract and retain um, some new businesses. And then we also, um, the vacant lot downtown at 144 East Tarpon Avenue, we are under that we are working on a lease purchase agreement with a developer who is proposing a three-story mixed-use building with floor commercial and the two top floors residential. Um, and so we're negotiating a lease purchase with that. And if that's successful, that'll be a nice project that will add to our, our property tax base. And then just a couple things to point out in the budget itself. Um, Line 63, that 187,000, those are available funds for projects. Um, line 99, which is uh, non-operating, that $100,000, that's the last payment for the Sun Bay Motel property. So with that, the, the loan that was made is, is paid up. And with that, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks, Karen. Um, um, any questions at all? No questions. All right. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Next up is our famous uh, uh, city clerk's department, Irene Jacobs. Good afternoon. The city clerk's uh, office budget consists of two budgets. Uh, the first one is the city clerk side, which is from the general fund. And the second is the collection side, which is from the water and sewer funds. 
Um, the clerk's operating budget is approximately about $58,000 with the highest expense being uh, elections, which is about 61% of that overall operating budget. Um, those costs uh, for elections are split through the various funds, which uh, include professional services, other contractual services, freight and postage, rent and leases, and operating supplies. Um, as you're aware from last year, elections are conducted every two years or two years in a row, I should say, with the third year being the off year. Uh, 2021 is scheduled to be the off year, as far as we know. However, we still have to budget because you never know when a uh, special or general election will be scheduled. Um, for that year, the third year, if no election is scheduled, um, those funds are not spent and they stay uh, in the fund and they're used to balance overall general fund budget in the, at the end of the year. Um, election costs range anywhere from uh, $3,500 for an in conjunction election with a county or a federal election. And that could be for a one or two card ballot up to 31,000. Um, those are just uh, costs for the supervisor of elections. Additional costs um, run anywhere from about three to $8,000, which include uh, legal advertising, uh, Spanish uh, translation, which is now mandated, uh, and polls place um, change uh, mailers. Um, the average, so the average election costs approximately $35,000. Um, other funds which make up the clerk's budget um, are code book supplements, uh, copier and printer rentals, and legal ads and recording fees. Um, some of those recording fees are recouped uh, through utility liens and code enforcement satisfactions. Um, for our collection side, uh, which is on page 237, the collection operating budget is approximately $40,000, and the highest expenses in, the, in that budget are for delinquent letters uh, monthly, and for our RVI, our, our, sorry, I should say our IVR um, uh, support maintenance. Um, and that takes about 63.9% of that overall operating budget. Uh, delinquent letters are taken out from non-departmental throughout the year. And at the end of the year, they're taken out of Fund 42. Um, last year, we totaled about 15,000 letters for the year. Um, this year, of course, uh, with COVID and everything, and us not uh, sending out letters. Uh, since March, we're at only at about 7,000 letters uh, for the year. The IVR uh, maintenance uh, is for interactive voice recognition, which allows our customers to make payments 24 seven in real time to their accounts. Um, other than those accounts that I've highlighted, uh, the rest of the budget is the same. Um, as for our capital outlay, uh, we only budget when directed from IT for replacement computers. And as far as our other equipment, um, we usually keep it until uh, we can no longer keep it because they can't repair it uh, because there's no parts made to repair it. Um, so that is all I have. I thank you for allowing me to present my budgets and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks, Irene. Any questions at all? No, 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 you know, no, like words of wisdom from, 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 from the deputy clerk. None. All right. Very, very <laughs> good. I mean, thank you. I'm sorry. Was that clear? Who? No. You good? I don't want to ever talk good. to you. This is the only thing. I can't wait till we're back in that room. I, I can't stand Zoom just for the record. So, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, next up is human resources. Ms. Niffin. Mm -hmm. You, oh, you're muted, Miss Sniffin. Still muted, Miss Sniffin. There, there we you go. go. Thank you very much for allowing me to present this afternoon. Um, the HR budget is pretty much the same as last year, uh, with the exception of the uh, computer that seems to have been removed from the um, from our budget because of uh, obviously because of costs. Uh, the computer was there just to uh, uh, to do. Uh, conduct testing so we can manage without it but what I'd like to do is I did give you a or send you a, um, a kind of a summary of the HR department functions I don't want to belabor that because a lot of HR in certain areas is common except um, there is a, quite a bit of difference in 
between public sector and private sector when it comes to some of the things in, in HR and uh, what's involved. Um, uh, I would like to delve into the, um, the thing that we, the thing that is our, um, it's our pride and joy and it's our uh, benefit program. Um, it's our best recruitment and retention tool that we have. Um, people often come here because of the benefits. Um, so I'd like to at least talk to you about what we're doing uh, currently. We um, did uh, issue an RFP for a consultant because the world of benefits has changed and over the last 20 years that I've been here, it's significantly more complex uh, than it used to be. So we did issue uh, an RFP. Uh, we had representatives on a benefit committee uh, from all the major uh, employee groups. We, you know, we had uh, uh, Judy Staley, myself, um, Paul Smith, um, Jeff Young and Craig Meisner. So we had representatives from every, every area. Um, we went through and uh, it was a unanimous decision because of the, uh, because of the presentation and because, or the package presented by the Gehring Group. Um, I, I, I don't want to go into all the details, but um, they, they provide more than just um, the agent of record. Uh, right now, um, they have all-inclusive services and all the other uh, bidders, uh, or I should say responders, um, did a la carte. So um, although it, it appears to be somewhat costly, if you do an analysis of what an what a, an agent of record would charge for a, an RFP um, because they've done all of our benefits, not just health. They've done dental, uh, group life, long-term long disability, uh, our section 20, 125 and our voluntary benefits, the whole, the whole package. Um, so they also provide a dedicated team. Um, there are no limits on what they, what they do for us as far as time spent. Uh, we're currently building a benefit, an online benefits administration system um, called Bentec. Um, they were also providing um, a, a program called Think HR, where you can um, uh, administrators can look and get answers to benefits questions and HR questions. They also have a portal that provides over 200 training courses, and they track it. Uh, one of the big selling features um, was important to us is that um, they provide uh, interoperability with our current Navaline program. They're the only company out there that does that. Uh, they have an HR hotline, an HR library, uh, LearnPro. They have access to legal advice um, for work comp, employment law, harassment, uh, a whole number of, of things that they do that is not included with a simple uh, agent of record. They also are going to provide us with a very comprehensive employee benefits guide. Uh, they will provide payroll stuffers. Um, they have a job description uh, program builder, um, salary benchmarking tools. Um, they have access to benefits attorneys for legal advice. So um, that's what where we are. They, the RFP has gone out. We are um, currently awaiting the results, which will, will be um, presented shortly and we will be taking obviously a recommendation to the, the, the board. Um, from there, I'd like to move on to the youth employment program, which is page 37. Um, we have, a, this was designed for students going into grade 12 um, in that particular year for the summer. Um, unfortunately, this past year, uh, we didn't have a lot of applicants uh, when we took it to the schools, uh, the answer we got was that um, they weren't paying enough money and we're, we were paying $10 an hour. Um, it interrupted their search for universities and colleges and vacation. Um, and the response wasn't what we expected. So um, this year there will be a savings because we will not be running that program due to COVID. Um, the last thing I want to touch on is risk management. Uh, the risk management, uh, that's page 323. Um, HR administers the risk management program, but per se, we do not have access to the budget. Um, that, I think, is a finance and, and safety thing with the fire department. Um, I do want to say that um, I, I understand um, that there has been, um, there's been quite a history 
Um, I want to say that we have had over the period of time from 2007, 2008 to 2018, 2019, we've had a net decrease in premiums of $722,595. That includes the premium reduction per se. And because our carrier, the Florida League of Cities, is a not-for-profit, um, they, do not they do not have to pay shareholders. So what they do on the property is if, if, if there's been a decent year with no hurricanes or disasters, they return part of the property premium uh, for the, for, to, their, to their members. So a combination of uh, pure premium reduction and return of premium has resulted in uh, quite a substantial savings for the, for the city. Uh, when I first came here, our budget was, our, the cost of it was well over, well over a million dollars. And um, that was for the work comp alone. Um, so we have we managed to get that down to a, a decent a decent rate. We're we're right now under under five hundred thousand. Uh, we've had a good year. Um, we're hoping that that continues. Um, so I think without further ado, um, that's it. And I would be glad to answer any questions that people may have. Thank you, Ms. Liffin. Um, any questions at all? Yes, the one I've been saving. Um, Ron sent out to the group, uh, I believe it's the results through April 30th. He noted in there that uh, the RFP you referred to earlier in the discussion is about $123,000 per year for three years or 369,000. The number just blows me away as being large. Any comment? Um, again, I thought initially that this was for the comparison for on the uh, uh, employee benefits, medical, dental, etc. But yes. from what I'm hearing you say, this is a much larger scope, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, they were the only uh, responder to the RFP that actually was fully responsive to our to our requests. Uh, they are providing a lot of value added services that you don't get through a strictly an agent of record. Uh, and if you if you anal analyze the fees, um, when you add in the um, the new technology that we're getting for online benefits administration, um, that's significant. It also includes the involvement of them in establishing a clinic. If that, uh, is that, if that uh, happens to result from the RFP because um, employees are pretty, pretty fond of that clinic. Um, but as I say, their, their, their involvement with us is not limited to the agent of record. They are actually coming in and helping us set up uh, these, these different programs. They're also going to be there to um, assist us with open enrollment, which will now be online. Uh, they will, they will made, made a commitment to be here every month so that they could, we could have a, um, I guess I um, stay in touch meeting, updating. So yes, um, that's probably why they were, were, were higher than the other bidders, but that's because they provide significantly more than any of the others. And right now they are, they are completely handling all of the RFP you know, we have, we're going out for every benefit that we have as far as health, dental, um, group life, section 125, all the ancillary benefits. We have at least seven different, and they are doing, um, they will do an analysis and they'll bring that analysis back to us. Um, not only that, they after, after the fact, they will actually help with the open enrollment. They'll train city staff on using this new system. Um, so there are several Added, added value components that, that obviously drive up the cost, but so far their performance has been um, more than what, what, what has been expected. We're, as far as staff goes, we're very pleased with, uh, with what they are producing. They've already saved us 25% um, commission in our IMED program. It's not a large amount and it's a voluntary benefit, but it's a savings that they were able to find and they're continuing to do so. I'm very optimistic on this, the program of bidding out the employee 
benefits because it hasn't been done for so long. And mm -hmm. I think they will be, that will be highly successful. But one question that I've been asking, uh, and, and you alluded to it, the benefit package is very good and an attractive. And mm -hmm. I've always said all along on this program, don't, don't try to mess with that. You know, they can, they can lower benefits, but just give us a competitive bid, keeping the employees whole. This is not a takeaway to the, uh, to the employees. But I think you'll get competition, and I'm very optimistic to see those results. Okay. That's all. Thanks, Claire. Anybody else? And I, and I also echo Claire's comments and praise as well. Uh, so thank you. All right, Ms. Niffin, thank you. Th thank, thank you very you. much. All right, that's it for our, for our, our presentations. Uh, public comments, do we have anybody in line to speak? We have no one in attendance. All right. Uh, staff comments, uh, deputy. No comments, Mark. Comments, chief. Any comments? No, sir. All right, chief. You good? Okay. All right. Board comments. One thing. I will be gone the last Thursday of June, so I'll be here next week, but gone the following week. So I assume we'll still be doing the weekly meetings. Um, I'll, so I'll be gone as well, David. Okay, so we need to, so we'll have to have somebody, I guess. How's that work, Michelle? Um, let me find out who the next senior person would be. Which means that you're both missing? Uh, it's the last Thursday in June. The 25th? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Is our next meeting going to be the 18th? Um, I believe so. Would another day in the week work? I'll be in Georgia all week, and my internet up there is very spotty, so I can't rely on it. But if Ms. Hales is available, that's fine with me, obviously. I guess yeah. that depends on what what Ron has next on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. I think I think uh, if we go the 18th, I think we'll be able to get enough out there to be able to take a – we won't need to necessarily go then. We can go into July with our next okay. meeting. Uh, I think good idea. On, on the 18th. Okay. Okay, fair enough. All right, that's good. I, I think that would work also because I'm not there that week either. You would have trouble making a quorum. Okay, okay. okay. let's just consider no meeting that, 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 that week off the bat then, okay? All right, thank you very much. So the okay. next meeting would be the 18th? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. For our regular meeting? Okay. Do we have yeah. any agenda items for that meeting besides what uh, Blood Ron's going to provide us? Anybody? Yeah. I don't have any agenda items. Oh, you have no item for next week, uh, Ron? Well, he will. He will, because I want to. I want to do an up. Lots gonna. A lot has started to change, so we want to update okay. you on some different statuses and stuff. So we will have by the 18th, um, kind of a budget update while we've been having these weekly meetings type thing. Okay. So, all right. I think it's good. important. We may have some. We have some issues that we have to discuss and get your feedback on as we proceed before we proceed to the commission. And we're going to give a commission a little introductory presentation on the 23rd. So if we need anything we want to run by you before the 23rd, um, I like to do that on the 18th. Okay, very well then. No, you don't need me to present either. there. Do you, do you, Mark? That, that's not that's on the presentation for me, right? That, that's in like no, September. No, this is, in, in essence, to get the commission, because I'm feeling the commission needs to see that introductory um, presentation that Ron okay. gave your budget advisory board so in essence he just wants to show i want him to to give that presentation to the board what he gave to you okay i got you okay budget. very good very good okay and so i assume we're good on the agenda for next the, the, the for next week mark will get with ron to get on those items anybody have any further comments all right we we will adjourn at 3 15 thank you guys thank you thank you Thanks.